There we go. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. And it is April 3rd, April already. Um, and uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're kind of continuing last week, just checking in with people around elementary ed stuff um, and middle school, I guess, as well. And, and anything else you want to talk about? Why don't we, um, why, don't, why don't we, Andrea, you're, uh, why don't you say hello? Tell us, uh, I'm going to use one of Alana Winnick's questions. Tell us a way that you used um, AI professionally and personally. Okay. Hi, I'm Andrea Zollner. I'm here in Michigan, in Oakland County, which is a third of the population of Michigan or something crazy. And so personally, how am I using AI? I am not really using AI. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, am, an that's an answer. I am mostly playing. And I'll tell you why. I just was complaining because I find I love writing so much that I get frustrated sometimes. Like, it's too slow. I want to just write it. And so... Um, I'm just kind of struggling with that. So I think the most I've been doing is image generation because I don't have as many art skills as I have writing skills. Cool. cool. Shane, introduce yourself and answer those G'day. two questions. I'm, I'm Shane. Yeah. Um, I'm from Brisbane um, in Australia, although at the moment I am at the Sunshine Coast, um, which is our lovely beaches at Noosa with my uh, my parents. So that hence the gorgeous background behind me and I'll be uh, hitting the beach a bit later in the in the day. Um, so I've been using um, AI personally for the image generation, but I've been frustrated because I have a very quirky um, uh, sense of, of things and I particularly like fantasy and I haven't I keep struggling with it getting getting it to create the quirky things that I wanted to it doesn't the picture I have in my head, I can't get the right words or I can't get it to show me these ideas I've got in my head that I can't make you myself. Get, so you have to get <laughs> I'm some, still learning. Some, some colored pencils and uh, markers. And, no, I'm just teasing. Yeah, yeah cool, cool. Yeah, I've tried that. It doesn't turn out well. Can, <laughs> can you also, we, we sort of ran, almost ran, you had to run out last week and you were just on the edge of telling us what your sort of inquiry or focus is. Can you repeat that for us? Yeah, sure. So um, my um, focus is looking at how um, uh, trying to design a tool to use AI to help analyse student writing samples um, to then help give teachers a prioritised list of how to help students who are well behind year level or, or are really struggling with their writing and have like a whole litany of issues from spelling, grammar, syntax, argument. And um, teachers often go, I don't know where to start. And so my goal is to, to, to create a tool that will help teachers go, oh, this is the first, or, or here are some ideas or strategies that I can implement um, and, and let the AI do some of the uh, pattern identification so teachers can focus on well, well, how will I help. Cool. Um, hi, Debbie, we're just uh, going quickly around. Um, Reem, why don't you go next? Uh, I'll get to you guys at the end <laughs> did you say me paul yeah i said you. Oh, yes okay I, it got a little scratchy um i'm hi i'm marina i am a third grade general education teacher in new york i teach about i don't know like 45 minutes from manhattan and my tech director who she has been on a few times with um us here at ttt alana winnick We've been doing a lot of exploration and playing and figuring out some ways to um, have entry points for our students to build up their understanding of AI literacy, as well as all the different um, intersections that come along with that, and especially to have it support their writing development. And um, like everybody else mentioned, we started with a lot of art generation and um, prompt based writing that way. So it's been um, a really cool learning experience for both of us and it's evolving. And um, I think the kids have enjoyed it too. Cool. Um, and 
we started yesterday, Maureen and I started um, with a, in a larger project around biographies that your students have been creating, writing. And um, we're going to think together maybe about, I hope we do, about um, creating a writing partner for that project based on some of, uh, based on your model of it. Um, and then we're going to, when you go back to school, think about um, your third graders messing with that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just a teaser to get going here. Uh, Debbie, do you want to say hello? And the question is, one way you've used uh, AI personally and one way you've used it professionally. Or you can punt or kick that or skip it as well. But hi, introduce yourself if you don't mind. We don't hear you yet. Yeah, so you work on that. Uh, although, oof. yeah. So as you're working on that, um, Aditya, do you want to answer that question? Sure. It's um, how I use AI and personally and professionally. Yes. I guess for me, it's very much one in the same. Uh, okay. It depends on what your de definition of either of those words are and what you would consider. Um, Answer it any way you'd like. Go for it. Sure. So my primary thing that I've been using at, the thing that I spend most of my time on is that I, I'm part of a debate team, as I think many of you know. And so I've been using it to kind of generate those arguments. And uh, uh, I see the question in the chat, how you had any more debates last week since you used AI? Um, so there is, I haven't had any debates since the last one, but I, I do have one coming up in roughly 24 days. Roughly um, 24 days. Okay. Roughly. Uh -huh. Exactly 24 days. Uh, <laughs> April 24th. Uh, okay. 20, 27th. Cool, cool. Well, we'll get back around to you. Nate, been a while since we've seen you. Nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm an eighth grader in Mr. Donsky's class, and uh, I mostly just use it for, like, making sure my writing is organized, uh, making sure that my message to the audience can, like, flow correctly, uh, and that it's, like, more effective. Cool. And at home, I use it to generate, like, 3D models. <laughs> Oh, I see. So uh, what tools do you use? Are you you doing I know you do some of that in now comment. Do you do it in other platforms too or not? Uh yeah, I have to cuz the now comment gives a code. So I have to import it into a program called OpenSCAD and that's how it makes the 3D model. So like the the first test that we did was like this pizza slice. So it gave wait, the model. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you got to slow down. You're going to Sorry. There's a pizza slice. So the AI generated a code that we put into the OpenSCAD program. Just the, that, now, the now comment AI? Yes. And, and it, it was accurate. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And then I was able to copy and paste that code into like an STL file, like creator. Uh, and mm -hmm. then it like, it created all the different parts and geometries to make this. Cool. Now what's that made of? Uh, just uh, plastic. It's 3D printed. Wow. PLA. Wow. Anybody have any That's questions incredible. for Nate? <laughs> <laughs> how did you How did you come across um, the process of now comment going into OpenCAD? Uh, I was just playing around with the AI one day, and I had the idea of like, what What if I could use the AI to translate from just like words on a screen to something like physical um yeah that could exist in like three dimensions yeah uh, that's so cool. it took a bunch cool. of um like trials but yeah did you did, say more about, about your prompt what, you you created a thinking partner to do this right? yeah uh sorry you cut out for a second could you repeat that You could partner to do this? Yeah, it's all um, a thinking partner from now comment. Is it me? Okay. 
Yeah, Paul, your audio is dropping in and out periodically. It sounds like there's some sort of time lag or um, like internet challenges with, with your setup. Yeah, I think it's also I can see your video cutting in and out. Yeah. De Debbie, is your mic working yet? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We can yep. hear you, yes. I clear. Did yeah, you want me like to? Might... Yeah, go ahead. Frozen. Jump in, Debbie. I think you might be frozen if you just go out and come in, maybe. Um, I uh, uh, have been watching webinars all day about administrators' views on AI and trying to wrap my head around the idea of what needs to be a policy and what needs to be a guideline and in light of k-12 education so that's how i've spent <laughs> spent the last few hours however um I, I saw a very interesting use of ai the other day um when a, a woman was trying to a teacher was trying to distinguish between when you would use summaries ai summaries and when you would use AI um, uh, um, rewrites uh, in different lang in a different in simpler language for students whose uh, mother tongue was not English, and she was trying to balance the idea of rewriting in simpler form, which stripped all the really useful vocabulary out and replaced it with more generic, sim simplistic terminology, which didn't reflect the discipline at all, versus when she did the summary, which kept the language, kept the um, disciplinary language, the specialized terms, but was very hard for kids to un whose native language isn't English to understand. So that's what uh, I saw recently that's just very provocative to me anyway. Coco, cool, cool. I, I think I'm back, by the way. My internet went down, wasn't uh, Kuma's face. Was, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, hi, everybody. We're back. I missed some of that, but um, you'll fill me in. I think, as yeah. You go. <laughs> okay. Um, we you got, do you, should we turn to looking at your project? Or wait, let's do more from the eighth graders first, and then we'll do that, okay? So maybe oh, bring it up. Oh, you're it. like breaking up again, though. I am? I can't, I don't know what to do. Let's see. And I have a question for Debbie. I want to know where you watch these videos. <laughs> oh, actually, the, that wasn't on a video. That was a real, the other one. I know, but I still want to know about these videos. <laughs> oh, um, you know, almost... Every state now is producing North. I just saw a group from North Carolina, and yep. I'm yep. I'm in Pennsylvania. I mean, I'm in Palo Alto. I'm, in, I'm moving myself to another state. Uh, no, I'm <laughs> in the Palo Alto, and they just have begun issuing guidelines and having conversations around um, policy versus guidelines and what should be in it. And there's still this tremendous and I think somewhat artificial pushback around um, uh, privacy in students, because uh, I think it's re I think it really is. Uh, students are much more conscious of what is being scraped or not scraped about them. I mean, we're not at the, we are not in the same place before social media. I think students are very much more aware of what to t say and what not to say. Maybe I'm dreaming. Um, so I think the res a lot of the responses, certainly from the administrators' points of view, are kind of artificial at this point. Mm. And I, I think students can be told not to give realistic information about themselves, where they live, their real name. Some uh, some uh, tools don't even have a sign-in, so all they can get is sort of 
very generic information about an individual if there's no sign in. Anyway, uh, it's the administrators come at it with, you know, we're being noble, we're figuring this out, we're, we want everyone to use it, except we have all these privacy problems and privacy issues. And I think it's somewhat artificial, somewhat, I think they're just really at this point, I th think administrators don't know what to do. And yeah, so yeah. they're hiding behind, you know, policy and guidelines and shoulds instead of could. Debbie, do you think there's a lot of fear? Because one of the things that I, I see in our system is there's a lot of fear about, well, what's about the worst case? And it's like, well, unless we can put policies and um, frameworks in place to stop the worst case, to stop the, that, you know, 0.1% of, of parent who'll go over the top to make a massive deal out of one situation, then they don't want to take a risk. Like my, my my department started by just banning AI last year. They just went, well, we just ban AI in schools. That's it. Problem solved. Done. And now they've started to realise, well, that doesn't work. But they haven't taken a step forward because there's that fear factor. And you're right. And the other part of that is that they're the kind of um, PD they are doing is tool based. They're not doing con any kind of conceptual understanding mm, of groups of tools or ideas around yeah. what, you know, they're doing, yep. you can use this tool and you can use mm -hmm. that tool. And they have these playgrounds where they put people in rooms and say, here, try these two things and see. And, you know, that works really well for like about five minutes. But I think yep. we can do much better in professional development than that. Yeah, well, look, look what Nate just did himself and just figured out a whole new way of doing things like that and combined two tools that had maybe hadn't been combined before. And that's going to continue happening. That's right. And we, should, would, be, I, and we should be supporting that agency. Hmm. I was asking, Debbie, because I, <laughs> I've been leading a lot of like conversations or been tasked with leading a lot of conversations with admin. And so I was like, when you said you were watching him and talk about it, I'd really love to see those videos because I think it would help, help me out, get another perspective. I've been kind of joking around, like, do you remember when everyone had house phones? Like Nate and Adita won't remember this, but we used to have house phones. <laughs> and you had one phone number. Yeah, yeah, you had one phone number for the whole house, Sorry. okay? Like this is way back. And everyone <laughs> knew you did not call during dinner. Like this was like a huge thing. Like late night yep. comedians would make jokes about like telemarketers calling during dinner. This was like a whole bit of history we've all forgotten. And to me, there's like a little bit because the tools are so varied and you can see like what Nate did with now comment, like was not the way that the model was like originally set up and Nate was playing around with it and did, had this other vision. And uh, so the tools are almost like meaningless, but we have to still come up with some norms around the technology. And we're just not quite there yet. Um, so I keep thinking like, what are, what is the rules that we're like, we don't need to have a policy about our calling during dinner, but we all just knew because that was how we related to each other as humans. So anyway, I don't want to divert our great conversation ahead of us, but that's what I was, why I was asking. So I'll be quiet now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just... I just I'll to jump put back in just ask sorry I just do you think do you think the norms and or the policies are gonna limit people or free people like is it is it possible to create a policy that encourages people to do more rather than less or are the policies all about protecting Oh, the the oh, policies will be about, about I know, minimizing. I what think. I'm leading is going to let people have some freedom because it's sort of like you want people to understand. Like, I think there is some concern. Like, I'm talking to some groups of students who are saying, and these are high schoolers <clears throat> who are saying, I'm worried about my intellectual property being fed into these systems. And I'm like, okay, like that's a real thing. So we want to make sure we're supporting yep. them and i think like the ai bill of rights goes a long way to say like as a student i have a right to um, a, uh, an AI 
is to evaluate me, for example. Right. But so, and, but let's, Andrea, I, I, let's stay stay with that one example though. So why aren't we using tools that don't do that? We can. That we can happen on exactly. Now, I know, I know so it does, which is why I tell so, everyone to go to now comment, Paul. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, but it, that's not the only place, right? But there, there right. are tools, yeah. But that would be that would be a good policy to to realize to to identify which tools are taking intellectual property and which ones aren't. That, I, exactly. I like that policy. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah I think you, it's something. You know, to the be other aware part of. of it is. The yeah. other part of it is administrators are bound and determined to make policies without first doing any professional learning of the people who are <laughs> going to be su uh, subjected to these policies. Yeah. I mean, I would go backwards and say, let's put a bunch of people in the room to actually experience and work together and try this for you know a certain amount of time. And then what policies would you want to see as a result of having some experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My my internet seems to be worked out. Um, it <laughs> sorry is. about that. Sorry. Much better. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to come back to Aditya and, and Nate. Um, you guys mentioned a couple of things, but you came here prepared to do some sort of uh, tell us what you're doing. Do, do, you, do you have more you want to say? I mean, my whole plan was just to uh, show you guys what I was doing with debate. Uh, I, I think I've started, like, tr trying some stuff that I started, like, the side switch partner and stuff, which I started doing at the last tournament. Uh oh, my computer. What's going on You're good. Here? We hear you. No, I'm, I, it's giving me some weird pop-up for, like, one of the programs. I have, like, okay. Unity downloaded, and it's giving, like, a terms of service update or something. Yeah, I don't, I, okay, I, I agree. Oh, no. One second. After thoroughly reading it through, of course. <laughs> Nate, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, Miss uh, Mr. Donsky sent an email out saying something about like a presentation to Dr. Lazovic. Mm -hmm. uh, did she mention that to you at all, or I haven't seen it. So talk about it. Oh, um, she sent an email saying that today she would have like an author come on and Dr. Lazovic. I'm not sure what you're referring to, Nate. I didn't see the email, sorry. Yeah, she, um, she said that she would have like, uh, like, one uh an author come on and we would like present to Dr. Lazovic. Is that gonna be happening uh, next week? I'll find uh, the email, don't worry about it. I'll check. Okay. Okay. Cool. Marina, do you want to share screen and, and we jump in and, and just sort of pick up where we left off with our planning? Is that okay? You're muted. There Can you, you say it one more time, Paul? It just, it was kind of like breaking up again. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, I'm sorry, but I don't know what's going on. So I'm saying if you could share screen and let's brainstorm together a thinking, a uh, writing partner that you, we can create for your, your model of your biography. Okay, let me just so, set it up first. Yeah, yeah. So here's the, here's the deal. Um, Marina, I, I, without going through the whole project, but um, where where her students are now is that they have created um, biographies and they put them into a um, a PowerPoint presentation. We're we're going to okay. take those out. We're going to make them into texts and um, and then put them up on now comment or not now comment. We're going to put them up on writing partners, and as an example of a kind of response we might want to make for the for the third graders we're going to try to build one right now for can you guys hear me? Mo what? the model we can hear you hi okay yeah i was just trying to figure out my, my computer just sometimes glitches when it's next to the monitor so i've got my other computer 
You're back. Shut down. This we're looking at Marina's. We're looking at Marina's work right now. Oh, uh -huh. cool. Okay. So, Marina, do you do you want to? Um, I hate to put you on the spot, but I think we need. Well, just describe what you have here. So, um, this is actually my mentor piece, and um, though it's the my class and I we research together, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist. And I, I use the information that we learned about him to demonstrate a lot of the writing and structure and composition around writing and informational biography through the lens of perseverance. So it wasn't like a list of facts about the person. It was more about their dreams and hopes and aspirations for themselves, the obstacles and barriers that they encountered, and then how they worked through those to achieve their goals. So this is not perfect, but it's um, it was written by me um, in front of the students, you know, before they started to work with their own selected individuals to begin to use the strategies and thinking as well to compose. And who are, who, you told me some of them, but who did they choose? They chose, they chose Taylor Swift. Who so <laughs> Taylor Swift, they, um, one of my students chose Lindsey Vaughn, the skier, United States skier. Um, I had Alex Morgan, so soccer player. I also had three students select Albert Einstein, completely coincidental. And it's not like I had like a million books on the, this, you know, him. I just think I have a lot of kids that are really interested in science. Um, and he maybe perhaps was the first person they thought of. But um so those are just a couple of them. I'm trying to think of some of it uh, off the top of my head. We're out of school right now, so it's like not as fresh in my head. I know. Yeah, yeah. Right so let's. Uh, so where we were, and I, I don't remember what you said, but so what? What I want to encourage everyone to do is treat us like we're in a bubble and uh, we're working, and you should interrupt and ask us questions about what's going on. So your students are going to upload. There's an upload button right there, just like you did their text there might be a little process to get it from the powerpoint to the text but we'll figure that out um and then you're they're going to use a writing partner to give feedback and we don't have any yet in this group so we're going to make one right now so if you don't mind is that okay <laughs> but, yeah so if you click on writing partners right at the top and aditya and uh Nate, you should give some advice here as we're going, um, what she should do and, and so forth. Um, all right, let's make a new one. What what have you thought about the kind of feedback they might want to get on their on their biographies? Eventually, they're going to they're going to be recording them as podcasts. Mm. Yeah. Um. So I did some thinking since yesterday, and I wrote down a couple of ideas. I um, noticed. Thank you for doing that. that. <laughs> yeah, no, <go> <laughs> I noticed that at times some of my students could be. Um, they weren't really linking ideas from paragraph to paragraph, so some of the information sort of seemed siloed. It wasn't connected. So if they brought up something in the obstacles, perhaps it wasn't addressed anywhere else. So I was thinking about like that idea of like um, connected ideas across paragraphs, as hmm. well as um, repetition. So um, for those students who- But there's too much repetition or not enough? Too much. Okay. You know, so, so do you mean like sentence starters? They start each start a number of sentences the same way. No, I mean the like they might repeat the, they might repeat the same facts mm -hmm. in different sections. So mm -hmm. their work was not organized cohesively, I guess. Yeah. And the theme is basically um, 
they're show, using this person to show perseverance in yeah. Yeah, so it's through a lens of perseverance. Um, the bigger project here is they are creating podcast episodes for a podcast called that we call the Perseverance Pod. Um, and that's what we really wanted them to focus on as they were going through this. Okay, I have like four ideas, but I don't want them to be my ideas. What's your what's your first? Let's just make one of. There there were a few ideas you had in there. Um, Aditya or Nate, how would how would we start to build this? You would um, start by just giving it a name that would it'll it could be super simple, just like biography AI. It doesn't have to be too complicated. <clears throat> and then the short description the ai does that and it's going to make that its goal so i i it it doesn't have to be too long it can just be like an ai that can it, it's going to help them like reorganize their work right hmm. yeah that could be good so an ai that could help uh third grade students organize their um, work in a perseverance essay about yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we're gonna do our in a per um in a perseverance as she's been asked let's think about persona maybe perseverance themed essay or perseverance themed text By the way, worth knowing what what you're putting in there does not go to to the AI. It's it's just information for the user to find. Oh, I, okay. I thought that AI read through the short description too. Yeah, it doesn't get the short description, but that's okay. Okay, you still want to make oh, it good. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna put the language yeah. thing through? And, uh, are we gonna do the thing with responding the name? Yes, we could. Um, and, uh, also, I noticed okay. an interesting glitch with that. So I was using one of my thinking partners right before to prep some things, and uh, it started. I gave it a prompt in English, obviously, and then I think it responded. Started responding in Spanish, which I was just confused I know. about. So some, I told it for it some reasons. You told it what? It I, then I told it. Then I edited the prompt to say, "Please respond in English," and it worked. Yes, yes, that I've been doing that too. So here, let's 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 explain that to everybody. So we we kind of learned that, and you could do this, Marina, that if you put at the top, um, please respond in the in the language of the question, that it will shift to. Let's say you put it in your language is Japanese. I think um, it will it will respond in Japanese, not in English. But for some reason, it kind of gets stuck at times. <laughs> And you have to say, go back to English already, um, right? But so that, but I think that's kind of fun, actually. I don't, I don't mind that glitch. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So, um, we we've been talking with um, Cecilia <coughs> Espinosa, who's written a book and does a lot, and studies on trans languaging, and she's going to join us at some point. Um, but the idea that we could do trans languaging online with AI is a very exciting idea to me that so that anybody could come in with their home language, put their home language in and then get that, get that as their response. Um, Cecilia made a good question, which was if you put language in that's like both English and Spanish, will it do both? And I actually tried it and it actually gave me all English and then did a Spanish paragraph at the end. So that's a possibility. So th this is something worth exploring. So in short, you should put at the top of your prompt, Marina, getting back to mm -hmm. instructions here. Um, you know, just something like, please respond in the language of, of the question. We can fix that later. 
moving toward um, persona, and there are three things to work on here, and it's, this is worth um, repeating, I think. Three things that I think about when we build, when I build my prompts, and there are lots of lots of ways to do this. Um, but um, but establishing a persona is is an interesting thing to do, not just because it for lots of different reasons. Um, one of them is if if you can be specific about the discipline, the sort of um, that the person is in. The AI recognizes that and limits what it goes out and searches for to that discipline. So if you say you are a physicist or you are you are a space invader, whatever, um, it 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 actually changes its its prompt or its response based on that. But in this case, what what kind of um, what do you think you want to do, Marina, for persona? Um, or anybody? Have I don't an idea? know. Nate and Aditya, what do you think? <laughs> they have more experience with this than I do. I, uh, I don't know. So. Or anybody? I don't Maybe know. I, I, I would, would you say first? something like a, a third grade teacher? Is that like respond like you're a third grade experienced th third grade teacher? Like, does it matter if you say experienced or not? It would matter. We can start that way. Any other ideas? Um, but we okay. organize our work in a person. I think this is the, the teacher would work really well if we're going to be like submitting it in the format of here's what I think you should do, like uh, almost how a teacher would give advice to their student. But if we're talking as if the student is themselves, I think we should do it from the persona of a third grade student. Which, yeah, I like, I, I like. Oh, you yeah, like a peer, like a, yeah, yeah. A peer, like a peer collaborator. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I was also wondering who is the audience for the perseverance pod. That's kind of your ultimate audience. You could also make the persona mm -hmm. the final audience. I don't know who the audience for the perseverance pod is. Yeah, so it's it's a children's podcast, so the audience would be children and people their age but could include anybody else as well yeah people who love um, them. but ultimately <laughs> so, it be, so it should be understandable to uh to look let's do like one of those, i'm trying to think of an example this should be like something where the, it's aim it looks like it's aimed towards the kids but the adults in the end are also going to be part of the audience like their parents you said you're going to send this to their parents right mm-hmm so it should be like something where it would not, where it would be understandable and useful for a third grader, but also understandable and useful for an adult, which is a, a hard balance to strike. But yeah, so so, so what? Yeah, what I'm gonna say is that Ooh. I would I I I think it's pushing AI a little bit to do both, but try it and then come back and know that that's one that's something you could take out and then try it again and see which one works better you know so that trial and error so if you're uh, if what you're asking ai to respond to is the text mm -hmm. you could say um you are a third grader reading this and trying to understand this text Mm -hmm. Or you could say you are a third grader listening to the podcast from this text. That's mm. me. Yeah. Go but for it. the third like grader that, is yeah. the audience mm. piece. Cool. But listening to the podcast would would shift the focus from written to like, is exactly. this writing mm. like oral in some way? Yeah. And that's what was my question to you is because you yeah. your assignment asks for a written text, but you're asking them to convert it to a spoken mm. communication. And is there part of the problem with what you're seeing as being that they're putting fact repeating facts in multiple places mm -hmm. is that they haven't really organized one their idea and two their audience and three their medium 
And maybe those are the three things that you're going to ask AI to help you with mm -hmm. or ha help them with. Mm -hmm. you're, into, you're into the framework part, which is great. Marina, I want to make sure you get down the description of the uh, third graders here, though. Did you? Um, oh, you're just listening. You're not doing your work. Come on. No, but I, I actually I, I really you. appreciate what Debbie was saying and I, that yeah. really what it comes down to is this it's 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 a put it's the transcript, right? Like it's you're looking at the transcript of what somebody might be listening to. Um so you're seeing it, but you're not experiencing it in the the mode that it's gonna end up in. Okay. And actually, that's really nice to say a transcript because it's a different kind of speaking, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. a different kind of communication. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, what am I writing now? Well, first, you have to describe the audience. You have to, you, you need to you, go to a new paragraph and, and write. Be a be a third grader who just heard this text written or heard this text read aloud to you. You know what would be really good? Like if there was almost like um a super prompt, like almost like a scaffold that like you had that I could like not like a fill in the blank, but kind of like a fill in the blank to like help me with some of the parameters. I think yeah. that those have been really helpful with some of the, like, I mean, you know, some of the youth voices protocols. And I just thought of that as I'm typing this, cause I, I'm at a yeah, point we where could create a template that would help you yeah, yeah. put in here and everybody's seeing oh, all these yeah. really great ideas too. Almost what like what, is, what, what would you expect in this type of prompt? Like I've been doing a lot of prompt based writing myself independently, what goes into these types of prompts and what, And, and yes, such but on, I, I just started making some notes exactly because I'm trying to get my head around this as well. So yeah, that's, that's a good point. What if you do like a what if you do like an article on writing partners or youth boy or now comment or both about like how to create your first thinking partner and then a guide to different tips like for example about the language, uh, give it a personality. You know some tips that you would give someone as they're trying to construct their first thinking partner. Would you do that for us, Aditya? Uh. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I, I need to, yeah, we need to talk a little more about that. But yeah, I think that's something we could probably do. Okay, we can work on it together. But, but yeah, I, yeah, that's but we're gonna have your idea of a template too. I, I am a little nervous because it, it keeps changing, and like I have my idea about how to do it, but but I guess that's okay. People can people will still have their own flair. And Andrea, you had some. You had sent uh, a couple months ago some some people who had put some templates together as well. But but let's keep going. Um, so you have your persona now, I, and I wrote them down as as Debbie was talking. There's um, no, and I can't read it. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's the idea, the audience, and the mode, something or the medium. So what mm -hmm. you need next after you, and you could flesh out that uh, persona a little bit more when you're ready. But what you need next is what are the things that the, that that person are, is going to do? When you read my text, right? Thanks, Andrew. So when you read my text, please pay attention to, or, you know, the, if, if there's too much repetition, I don't know what else you want to put there. But like make a list of the things. What is the persona going to do when they look at this text? And thank you for being on the spot for us tonight here. Um, and I, I tend to, just so, so I see it when I go back, I tend to put the, the framework, the activity that the, that the writing partner is going to do into a different paragraph. Worth knowing, paragraphing and sentences and all of that, the computer doesn't see any of it. <laughs> but...
any other thoughts, suggestions? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I could, somebody else could help me build that. Please help me build this. I don't, I don't know. This is just playing, by the way. What about, so, okay. you know, so you, you just be the typist and we'll tell you things. You, yeah. Men yeah, I you mentioned facts and how the same facts appear in different places, right? That a mm -hmm. kid will repeat the same thing. So um, please pay attention to literally um, how, how the facts are organized and um, not repeated in... I mean, can't you be really specific like yes, that? Yes, yes. Being specific is good. Yes. Uh, and um, I think you were saying also that there was a problem with transition. So you want to say something like mm -hmm. um, outline outline the subject of each paragraph and ask the student to check for transitions. I mean, you don't have to have the student get answers. You can have the student get questions back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, you know, listening to what you were saying about what was frustrating you about what you saw. Aditya, you were going to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was just about to comment something, which is I think that one thing that's important when creating partners to get feedback on your writing especially is the voice and if we were talking about this a few weeks back the idea of the president keeping your voice and kind of preserving it like i feel like especially in some of the earlier pieces when i use ai particularly uh like that 100 word piece i felt like my voice wasn't preserved really well in the way that the thinking partner was structured and the way i used it so i think it's important to keep that and i think that while keeping things like repetition that stuff is great and important. I think that in addition, making sure that the individual's voice still shines through. Now, I don't know the best way to do that. Again, wrong for snap. Marina, I would right. just, I would use exactly that line, right? Just tell the computer, make sure to to keep the my. You you can write these like you're talking to the computer for advice, like. You're telling the computer what you want it to do. So you say, make sure my voice shines through in the end. Something to that effect. Right. Um. Sort of last, not last section, we can go back and think about this, but um, I do want to try this. Uh, the um, hey. now we need to think about what what you want the what you want it to look like in the end, what the output should be, and and keep in mind we're talking about third graders here, so what should the output be? Should it be a list of? Ideas should it be if it's a list you can use the word bullet list. Um, it it likes that. Do you want it one paragraph at a time? Do you want a list of ideas? Nate, do you have an idea? You unmuted there. Yes. Yeah, it could give the students like an outline that they could use for their podcast. Hmm. That is interesting. I'm just on writing partners at AI. Uh, and it's saying and it's giving me a security error because it's saying that dot, you're dot net uh, aditya dot net uh, so paul how 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 good is it at say prioritizing a list so if you say a list can you say the top three or the the um the three with uh, the greatest impact or, or things like that I was also like wondering how yeah. much like peer review the kids are doing. If there's like a protocol that the kids are familiar with, like two stars and a wish or a glow and a grow, or if that's something like in their good language, yeah, could point. it be kind of familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we've actually done both of those as, yeah, yeah, we've also done both of those as well as like tag, um, yeah. the tag strategy, so tell something you like. 
It just Ask might be kind of fun. And give a suggestion. Yeah. I just like mm, wonder if it's like a, a praise question suggestion, like you said, or um, if I've actually done I've done, I've taken those protocols and I've used them because I, you know, we obviously don't have anything for the kids to get AI feedback on their writing and I've taken their writing and used it myself in Microsoft Copilot using those protocols, giving it back to them as comments and what's, labels. So, added there. so can we add that here? What What's the protocol that you would use? Um, I was trying two stars and a wish. I like that one. <laughs> what? Two stars and a wish. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's my favorite. We're, we're too. Not make this perfect. I know. I feel like that's the one that always like gets. <laughs> Let's say, and, and do we have any idea if AI will know what the, what you're talking about? It probably will, right? It's but a it's a pretty I'm popular. Sure, I'm sure that idea has been ingested. <laughs> yeah. Surely. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go real quick. Quick test in chat GPT and let you know. I I wonder too it's, if you could yeah, say it, please it, give no, feedback three pieces back, two positive feedbacks, name them a star. You could also train it that way. You hear it, yeah, you're being more specific. That's great. Listen, um, I, I'm looking at the clock and I'm I, I know it's not perfect, but let's try what you've done and see what happens. Is that okay? Okay. I just want to finish the press, um, but we can always go back. And, 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 but, but what do I want? There is actually a whole body of research around um, ill-formed prompts, right? That that if you make ill-formed prompts and see what you get, and then leave them not completed and so forth. Anyway, so it's okay that it's not complete at times when you try them. Um, so the category. Uh, this is a men. We're going to call it a, I'm going to just make this fast. We're going to call it a mentor. Okay. Because it's giving feedback. And you're going to share this with the third, the grades three to five. Three to five. Okay. That you and Shane are the bosses of. You're the <laughs> mayors of grade three to five. Anyway. All right. And you're going to hit Woo. create. And then you're going to come back to the grades three to five, and hopefully your document is there. If it's not, is it? Yeah, no, it's, no, it's not, not there. No uh, so, there. So you you need to share your document, but you can go to your library and find it. We'll, we'll have to share it. Okay, let's um let's go to the whole document, which is general document comments. Get the AI there. Cool, cool. There should only be one. Writing partner here. Okay. I hope it's there. It is. Okay. Cool. Um, now, um, what's your question? Um, I don't know. What do you think of my writing? I don't know. Yeah. How can how can I make this better? With my writing. You, you might you might even mention that you're you're going from this to to a. To a podcast eventually or, or to record it but yes keep it simple you got it so okay cool cool, cool. now in the um I, I like to call it the empathy box um and this is actually a piece of research that's been doing <coughs> people are doing also like if you tell it who you are, and you know, ChatGPT is all, all of the systems are doing various variations of this. But in that third box, you want to say that you are a third grader, and that uh, I don't know that I, whatever else you want to say. So you want to say I'm a girl. I'm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, think... I I love Miss Lombardo. I am eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I love my teacher. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but you could put things in there like, "I hate reading." Oh, yeah, cool. Um, Goodbye. Uh, I, and and it actually it, it makes a difference. Oh. So again, empathy box. It's not your empathy. You're giving the AI a yeah, chance no. to be empathetic to you. 
Um, okay. Yep, you got it. Now hit continue. <clears throat> So when she was doing that, she was acting as the person who was who wanted the um, feedback. Yes, she's acting okay. as a third grader. Exactly. Um, now, just I, I, we don't have time for to resubmit, but I just want to point out oh. that you could. It's okay. You could resubmit, you know, and, and look at it carefully. But let's see what we got. Wow, it did each paragraph. So I haven't read your piece, i got to be honest. But what do you think about the response you got? I mean, first of all, for a third grader, that's a lot to read through. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think it, it did follow the two stars and a wish protocol. Where? Yeah. At the bottom. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could just like tell it to not. The rest of the stuff seems to be like a summary. Maybe mm -hmm. just tell it to not summarize. Like this doesn't seem like, especially for someone who's written this piece, they spent their time, they've poured their effort uh, into this piece. They they know all about. They should know at least should know all about this piece. Mm -hmm. And they probably don't need their own piece summarized right back to them. That doesn't seem particularly useful if you so, spent weeks on a piece. But I, so, yeah, yeah, I think the two stars and a wish would just be enough. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so go back, go back to the writing partner. I just want to, um, we're just, you know, we, we could stop mm -hmm. and think harder about all, no, the, I'm sorry, the um, up on the blue menu writing partner. Mm -hmm. And edit that writing partner. And toward the bottom where you're describing the output, say something like, avoid giving me a summary of my own text and instead just give me the two stars and a wish. Be that specific, you know, just tell it what to do. I, I like to think of this as a, um, I'm a director and <laughs> I'm giving notes to an actor, right? Wow, what do you want? But it's it's more than that, but that, that's worth thinking about. So this is this is why you can this is why you can write these things and you got Nathan and Aditya will confirm this, I think. You can write these things in 30 seconds, but then when you test them and you want to do this and you iterate you end up going down this rabbit hole and you know you look up and you've skipped dinner right <laughs> just is that okay? uh i i think sometimes it's even longer than just skipping dinner sometimes you <laughs> skip back for, for the next five days in a row <laughs> if oh, you know on. what i mean but yeah i um definitely i think once you make a thinking partner and you realize that you realize the shortcomings and keep Expanding and iterating and expanding and iterating and expanding and iterating. That's like you and ultimately I, create something that produces exactly what you want or you know exactly what you want, and then you come up with another idea on how to expand it. And then the cycle just keeps continuing. So and 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 what I, I want to identify what one of the things at least, one way to think about that, which I think is really important, is what you're doing as the human there is you're saying, Hey, I could give better comments than that, right? And, and if I did it, I wouldn't do the summaries. I would just do the stars, right? Um, so let me go back and try to make the machine more like me. Um, and and it, when we kind of realize that that's what we're doing, we're we're kind of making making it be closer to who you are and what you can do, because you'll always do better. It didn't work. Or did you try it again? I and did. It, and it didn't work, right? No, it did. I oh, mean, it, it did? did actually. I prefer this better than what it was. Oh, okay. Wait, uh, we can't see it. I think we're looking, you're looking at the older, we're looking at the older one. Oh, yeah. Can you scroll up? Are, are we looking at the older one? No, we're looking. This is the old, this is the old one. Yeah. So, okay. So, it, it's quicker. This yeah. The second one. This one's also formatted better. Okay. In my opinion. Like, I, I know that they're sectioned because... You know, um, 
it's like the readability is important too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and I, you and I were started to talk about text features. And when we're talking about middle uh, elementary school, we should, we might be able to tell the AI to use particular text features, right? Um, make mm -hmm. sure you use headlines, make sure you, you know, that kind of stuff. Can, can you, can you refer it to certain, uh, documents that are like online please refer to documents um like do, can you put like a website address in or a name of them for it to refer to that and then go oh for grade three or for for this level of writing uh, does it work in that way the way our system is set up no yeah but but you could copy and paste into the prompt right and one of the things I was going to suggest is that Marina, you go to the Habits of Mind and find their description for students about persistence, and mm -hmm. you could have it like compare the text against that description, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's another possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you I know, I, I like the idea also of the transcript, and you could ask it to make a transcript, right? But you wouldn't want kids to copy that, but. Anyway, mm -mm. Yeah, I, mm -mm. I know. You know, but, yeah. one thing I was thinking of when you said persistence is I was wondering, and I don't know the answer to this, if um, these people have different kinds of persistence, if you mm. could get more of a quality out of the kids about being more discriminating about is this persistence by just continuing to do the same thing until somebody finally answers the door? Or is mm -hmm. it's about, you know, over time doing a certain, and I don't know what the differences are, but I think that makes those reports more interesting because they get more, instead of saying he, he was a persistent person and, and now look, he's an astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna call time. Um, Marina, thank you for being our, uh, it's fun to do, to do this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Marina. And and please uh, jump into either writing partners or now comment and you know try your own hand at this. Um, yeah, we'll do. Cool, cool. I'll have a crack at this for for next week, and then um, cool. well, I've let us know what uh, you reached did. out to to Adit here and said that if he wants to put some ideas together for the like the outline. I'm happy to be a bit of a guinea pig because I am literally at the start of the, of doing this as a as a newbie. So uh, then uh, I can give him some feedback and we can work on that together. Um, plus the Dan Fitzpatrick um, frameworks, I'll I'll have a look at that as well. Which um, I think was it um, Marina or Andrea um, shot through to me. So um, yeah, yeah we'll if you need me to it. send you. Um a fair use copy <laughs> let me know um paul can anyone make those on writing partners too like yes. any user okay that's what i thought so I um remember. so andrea you're a district person so let me tell you let me let me answer that better sorry i have i have i have like given things away for 25 years right I, yeah. am, I am trying to get districts and schools to to subscribe to the writing partners instead. So it's a, it's sort of a, a simplified now comment that uh -huh. hopefully makes it easier for anybody to use. Um, Got it. So, yeah, you could go in and anybody could go in and, and play around there. Um, but there is a goal here of yeah, and and just to say, um, Miss, uh, so, so, uh, the the eighth graders who came here and said we use AI in eighth grade, and then ninth graders came and said we're not allowed to use it. I want to kind of address that and try to build a tool mm -hmm. that teachers can play with and across the whole school, rather than mm -hmm. it being these amazing teachers in one you know one teacher yeah, in one school in right? pockets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, that's the goal. Yeah, you know, I'm not so interested in money, but I'm interested in money so that people treat it seriously. We could think of it sure. that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and was, longevity. Mm -hmm. 
I was talking to Ms. Dabrowski and she said that she was going to invite Mr. Lazovic, the, the principal of the high school, to the call. Again, I think Nate mentioned that earlier. Oh, that's who it was. Okay. Yeah. Principal, so I think, I think, so she, um, it was supposed to be this week and it's great you guys came anyhow, but um, next week I think there are going to be more eighth graders here. So, okay, that's going to be great. Oh. Okay. Also, I, I have wait a for more quick eighth graders. comment. What? Uh, I have a quick comment. Uh, I was trying to use a side switch partner, like you said last time, where you plug the thing into the side switch partner and then put the side switch partner on the side switch partner's original response. But I ran into an issue where I kept saying, well, I can't do counter arguments, but if you give me an argument that goes with the counter argument, I can kind of do it. And it was, it was kind of just confusing. So wait, you use the side switcher and you tried to side switch back and it didn't work? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it didn't work. Hmm. It gave me an error. It was like, <laughs> which is interesting. I think I have to modify the prompt a little. Okay. Again, go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Because I thought I was able to do it, but we can look at that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Thank you all for continuing to build here with us. Um, this That's what makes this exciting to work with you all. On. I'll talk to you all Each soon. Each time I go get I learn something new. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank By you. By the way, on right on writing partners, um, I just built out an entire habits of mind um, for writers. Um, it's, uh, so uh, because I'm going to uh, the 30th anniversary of the habits of mind um, in, in, uh, in this book. And so we're going to be testing some of that out. So anybody who wants to That's play on writing that partners, stuff, Paul? It's on writing partners. That's right. Thank you. So, and, and Andrea, the, the, the idea is that there would be different groups. Like there's a C3WP yeah. group. So, yeah. And they would have their own writing partners um, distributed. I love that. So, all right. Good to talk to y'all. Talk to you again next week. Thank See you later, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thank you.